Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is string permutations and it is an easy level problem. So the problem statement is again very straightforward. It says that we have been given a string s and we have to find all the permutations of the given string and those permutations need not to be different. So what do we mean by this particular part need not to be different. For example, in this particular case, you will see that the initial string is a a a and all the permutations are looking the same, but they might be actually different. We will see with the help of an example. So let us say, let us say we have three a's, right. So if the first permutation is a a a, you can consider that these a's are not identical. They are in fact a1, a2 and a3. So what will be the permutation? The first permutation is a1, a2, a3 itself. Then the second permutation can be a1, a3 and a2 and then the third permutation can be a2, a1, a3 and so on, right. So this is what they are trying to say and we have to consider all of these permutations unique. So we have to find all the permutations and return a vector of string. So we are going to return a vector of string consisting of all the permutations. Now for all these types of questions, you need to know recursion, you need to be very comfortable with how to use recursion. And in this video, we are going to see how we can perform recursion and find our answer for this particular problem. So first of all, I wanted to give you a general idea of how to approach recursion problems. So whenever you think of recursion, it is not very complex. The first part or the first essential thing that you need to know about recursion is the base case, right? So whenever you see a problem, right, you want to solve that particular problem with recursion. First of all, you need to have a base case. Right. What is recursion? You have been given a problem. You will divide this problem into smaller sub problems right, and solve those problems independently and you will divide them to such an extent that only a small problem will be remaining for which you already know the answer. Right. So this small problem is known as the base case. Right. So for any recursion problem, first of all, you need to know your base case. The second thing you need to know is your current state. Right your current state and how you can make a transition from your current state to your next state, right. So you need to know this transition, how to transform your current state into your next state or into a smaller sub problem, right. If you know these two things, then recursion will take care of all the other things automatically, right. This is the power of recursion and it similarly goes with DP as well. The most important things about recursion and DP is that you just need to think of two things that one is the base case and the other one is a transition from the current state to the next state. If you know these two things, then the algorithm will take care of itself and you don't have to worry about any other thing, right? So you have to trust this recursion function that you have created and it will automatically work for you. Now in this particular scenario, we have, let's say a1, a2 and a3, right? This is our string. Now I want to find all the permutations, right? So I have three places. First of all, let's say I am at the first index, right? And I have three choices to choose from. I can either take A1, A2 or A3, right? So the first thing about the current state is that all three of them is available to me, right? I have not taken any of them. So I can take A1, A2 or A3. Let's say, let's say I take A3 from here, right? So now A3 is taken. This particular element is taken. I cannot take it again and I move my pointer to this particular position, right? Now only a1 and a2 are available. I have to choose one of them. So I believe till now you must have realized what we are trying to do. We are trying to form what is the relation between my current state and my next state. So the first thing, the first thing I need to know for my current state is that how many elements are there that I have not taken till now. So for example, in this particular position, in the first position, all of the three were available and I could have chosen any one of them. Let's say I choose A3 first and then at the next position, I will have two options available. So the first important thing about my current state is that at which position I am and what are the elements that are available to me, right? So now if I know these two things, I will be able to figure out what are the choices that I have for my current position and I can try keeping all of those choices one by one. So let's say I put a3 here and at this particular position, I put let's say a1, right? Now how do I move to my next state? To move to my next state, I will increment my pointer by 1 or I will move to the next position 
and I will also mark it somewhere. I will also store this information somewhere that A1 as well as A3 have been taken. Right. So this is how you move from your current state to your next state. You do two things. The first thing is to move your pointer to the next position. And the second thing is to update that you have taken this particular element and you cannot take it again. Right. So the next time you are trying to figure out what are the possible elements I can place in this particular position, then you will have fewer elements rather than having all the elements together. Right. So this is how you can form your permutation and what will be the base case in this particular problem. When you reach a position that exceeds the size of the string, that means you have exhausted all of the elements in your string and this will be your base case. Or you can also put it like when you find no other elements to place at the end of this particular string, that means you have exhausted all your elements and now you cannot add any elements after it. Right. So this is how you can solve this particular problem. Now if I show you the code, then it will be much much more clear to you and you will be able to solve this problem easily. So you see what I have done is, I have created my answer vector and I have initialized my current string with an empty string. I also create a visited vector which is initialized by the size of the input string and all of them are initialized to false. So I just call my helper function. What my helper function will do? It will check whether the size of my current string is equal to the size of the input string. That means I have taken all the characters that were in my original string s. So in that particular case, I just push back this particular current string into my answer vector and I can just return from here. Otherwise, what I'll do is I'll just try to traverse through all the characters of the input string. And if I see that this particular character is not visited, I push back that particular character at the back of my current string. So string is actually a vector of characters. So you can also perform these types of operations on strings. It will work without any problem. So what I do, I just push back the current character into my current string. Now I mark this particular character as visited. Since I have taken this character now and I cannot take this particular character again. So that is why I mark it as visited and call my helper function. Right. Now, as soon as I come back from my helper function, you will see I am marking it as unvisited. Why is it so? Let me just show you with the help of an example. So let's say you first took A1 at this particular position. You explored what are the possible combinations starting with A1. Right. Now, when you come back to this particular position, now you want to explore A2. So instead of putting A1, you have to put A2 here. That means A1 is now free. Right. Only A2 is taken. So before marking A2 as taken, I will have to mark A1 as free, right? Because I'm not taking it anymore. That is exactly what I'm doing here. I'm marking it as not visited. That means I'm marking visited of I as false and I'm just popping back the last character from my current string, right? So this will remove that particular character. So you see, I just know what is my base case. I just know how to make the transition from the current state to my next state. And this helper function or my recursive function will take care of all the other things automatically. Now, what I do at the end, I can just sort my answer vector. So they have not mentioned it explicitly anywhere, but I got a wrong answer because of this. They want all the permutations in sorted order. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works. So you see it passes all the test cases and this solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach more number of people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share the channel with your friends and until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.